Hi, my name is Sarah Jo and I'm a student at the Ontario College of Art and Design, so hopefully I know what I'm talking about. What I'm going to discuss today is whether or not shock art is a valuable tool for artists. But first, what is it? I'd personally interpret shock art as a contemporary art practice that involves affecting the senses with disturbing imagery, sounds, smells, etc. The main purpose is usually expressed as the desire to make a radical statement with methods that are often considered bizarre, offensive, disgusting. These are just a few of the words typically used to describe the art form itself, and consequently, it elicits extreme responses from its viewers. If it didn't, why call it shock art? Some famous artists who have engaged in shock art include Damien Hirst, that guy famous for putting a big dead shark in a tank of formaldehyde, Andre Serrano, known for taking photographs of crucifixes submerged in his own urine. Jeff Koons, who did an entire series of sculptures depicting intercourse with his porn star wife. That's probably why he looks so happy. Pietro Manzoni, who canned his own excrement and sold it to galleries. Guillermo Vargas, who starved an already emaciated dog as an exhibit. And Marco Evaristi, who made meatballs and served them using fat from his own body. The infamous Marcel Duchamp may also be seen as a contributor to shock art. Perhaps he may even be the artist responsible for its conception after his prank release of a urinal to an avant-garde art show in 1917. How so? This piece, so shocking at the time that it was removed from the gallery where it was placed, introduced the world to art that was not meant to just be visually appealing like typical art of the time but was meant to unsettle its viewers. After the debut of Duchamp's urinal piece, entitled Fountain, innumerable artists have utilized strategies such as those that Duchamp did with Fountain to make their work successful. And what strategies would those be? Shock tactics. As they exist in combat, they exist in art. When fused properly by an artist, they can attract a lot of attention very quickly and inspire many intense feelings. If this is accomplished, a work of shock art is usually considered successful, and basically anything an artist can do to rattle the viewer can be considered a shock tactic. For example, it may be with massive size, such as in Anish Kapoor's Cloud Gate, hyperrealism, as with Ron Mowick's Wild Man, graphic sexuality, like with Jeff Koons's Jeff on Top, or outrageous materialism, such as Damien Hirst's For the Love of God. There are many ways to shock your audience. But the question remains, what's the point? Is shock art even worth being produced? I think yes. Why? Let's look at the last four artists I showed you and see how shock art has served them. Anish Kapoor. Would he be so well known if he made normal sized pieces? Ron Muick an artist who also works on an abnormally large scale but is better known for the extreme realism he creates, would his work be so stunning if it was life-sized and not so true to life? Jeff Koons' direct representation of his sex life, would it be so controversial if it was, say, a sculpture of him eating dinner? Then Damien Hirst. I don't think this piece would have been so shocking if it were made out of, say, plastic. The fact that it cost him a couple million to make and he's asking nearly 200 million for it back is alarming enough. He didn't need to make any sarcastic comments about religion to make it shocking. Looking at these few pieces that only scratch the surface of what shock art really is, we can see why it's produced on such a large scale. It attracts attention and criticism like a magnet and thereby notoriety for the artist, therefore fame. This popularity then allows the artist to communicate their message on an even greater scale than before they were noticed. Also, the fact that a shock artist creates such a passionate audience forces them to really consider the radical issues that many shock artists raise, whereas those issues may have been ignored in more subtle works. Another great thing, as with Damien Hirst, making art that really gets people's attention can make you filthy, stinking rich. These are just a few of the points that can allow us to gauge the value of shock art. So, classmates, what's your stand on this contemporary art practice? Is it senseless? Refreshing? Empty of meaning or soaked with significance? Are these points not enough to make shock art a respectable endeavor? And why do you think so?